Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning. Today, my guest is Melody Shaper, who is a registered somatic movement therapist, as well as a Laban movement analyst and Gestalt psychotherapy practitioner and an Alexander Technique teacher. She uh, lives and practices uh, just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And in her, in her uh, teaching, Melody has been exploring the relationship between love, compassion, and transformation. And she's discovering, and these are her words now, pure love is the foundation of all conscious evolution. The way we use ourselves and our hands is directly related to the way in which we experience compassion, acceptance, and self-love. The way we experience self-love is directly related to the process of conscious change and growth. So, Melody, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. It's a pleasure to to talk to you again. We did an earlier podcast a few years ago. Uh, I wonder if you could begin by giving our listeners a, a, a brief idea of what the Alexander Technique is. Sure. I actually was writing a blog this morning, and here is a line from the blog that I wrote. Okay. Um, I said, for those of you who don't know what the Alexander Technique is, it is a radically simple and profound method to discover hidden patterns of tension and holding that keep us from being free, fully open, and evolving. The technique is simple, and the benefits are life-changing. Excellent. And I think it might help um, the word love, I, I suppose everyone has some idea about what that means. But could you, could you say what your understanding of that word is so we'll be clear when we're talking yes. about it that everyone knows what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, there are a lot of different kinds of love. You know, there's erotic love, there's brotherly love, there's... Uh, uh, all different kinds of love. What I'm talking about is, I think it's called agape. Mm-hmm. That kind of love is what they, what is considered to be the highest form of love, which is radical compassion, which is deep compassion and regard for the self and others at our highest levels. It is not schmaltzy. It is not to get anything in return. It is not to manipulate another. It is the purest kind of caring and connection that I believe we can make as human beings with one another. It's similar probably to a spiritual kind of love, but I'm not talking about that as much as uh, the purity of self and other compassion, acceptance, and uh, forgiveness, I guess. And I assume not judging either. No, no judgment. Uh, no judgment. Whatsoever, no. And so I, I think for our listeners who may know a little bit about the Alexander Technique or have heard of it, it's generally thought of as a way of helping improve posture and coordination, helping people with uh, various kinds of pain, back pain, neck pain, helping performers do their jobs more effectively and with less tension. I don't think it's generally thought of as a way of helping one develop uh, love as you've described it. Um, Could you say a little bit about how the Alexander Technique would take one in that direction? Yes. Or or I suppose could take one in that direction. Right. And I honestly, Robert, I think it does. When it Mm -hmm. is, when when the work is working well with people, Mm -hmm. I believe that's what happens, that people come into a a place in themselves and understanding that is easy, that is accepting, that is free, Mm -hmm. uh, rather than, which I think, having worked for many years with people and seeing this, 
I think most of the people that I come into contact with and their pain um, issues almost always have a component of it in fear, judging, uh, you know, trying to be someone they're not, Mm -hmm. rather than in accepting where and how they are in every moment or in the present moment and, you know, embracing what is. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I, even though someone may come to me with shoulder pain, you know, because they've been holding themselves in in a way that has created that, so much of the time... I become aware when we start to undo that, that a lot of the holding pattern is related to how they feel about themselves and how they are with themselves in terms of their sense of safety, compassion, um, forgiveness, acceptance. um, And that I, I can't anymore in the work that I do separate the two. I see there is this doing, you know, work that happens with the Alexander Technique where we work with someone's head, neck, spine relationship. What I see again and again and again is that their whole way of being with themselves changes and changes pretty radically for a lot of people where they ease up on themselves, where they find themselves in a softer relationship with themselves, where they learn to care a little bit more about themselves and ease up on their judging, ease up on their holding. Um, I wonder, maybe I could throw out what I think is a pretty common experience of both of Alexander teachers and Alexander students, that one of the things that often comes up pretty early is that the student has likes will like to use words like right position or wrong position, right? Um, or right. you know, am I getting it? Am I doing it right? Right. And of course, Alex. Well, not of course. From from our perspective, Al- Alexander teachers, uh, I think, generally would would like to nudge people away from that kind of right wrong dichotomy and and just say well here's what i'm doing now is there some is it possible that i could do it a little more easily or with less strain or less right. effort so it's right. not about going from wrong to right but it's just about noticing what's going on and and um seeing if there aren't some ways to make make things a little easier for yourself Right, right. That's which I right. think relates to what you've just been saying. But it's usually pretty much on a physical, well, mental, physical plane. You know, am right. I? Am I? Is my head in the right position? Would be a typical question a student might ask a teacher. Right, and and right. a teacher will say something like, "Well, it's not really about position, and so on and so forth." Yeah. Yeah. What I, you know, it's funny, I was just working with a couple people and what I said to the one person that I was working with, I said, what if you were to accept where you really are right now? They were talking about the tension in their neck and that they felt like they never really experienced freedom in their neck. They didn't have the experience of that. And as I was lengthening this person's leg, she said, I'm trying to let my neck be free. And I thought, what? would it be like if you were to just accept and land in a way where you are right now as being totally okay, as being completely all right, and see what would happen from that moment. Mm-hmm. And and that's in a way, when I think about loving ourselves, that's part of it, to say, this is where, this is how I am in this moment, and this is okay. And from that acceptance... Then I think, I talk about evolution, that's when I think something starts to change. But when we start thinking that I'm in right or wrong land, Mm -hmm. there's no way to shift in that because we're already held. Um, And so I, you know, when people say, is this right or wrong to me, I, you know, always I say, just how does it feel? Where are you? How are you sensing yourself? And that's right. I, the right and wrong dynamic creates so many issues. For right, people. and I think a lot of a lot of students who, who have Alexander lessons 
pr pretty quickly um, get nudged out of that right wrong yes. dichotomy. Yeah. And I, I, I guess what you're saying is that when you let go of that in terms of yourself, it is well, would you say likely or that or say that facilitates you um, letting go of right wrong judgments of other people? Oh, without question. Mm -hmm. I have become radically kinder in my teaching and I think in many ways more acute and more specific mm -hmm. um, because it's there's nothing I well I I hope for nothing in the way of being truthful and that doesn't mean being harsh it means n nothing in the way of being right where we both are and knowing what's what's in between us you know what's in between myself and another person and what's in between that person for them with me and there's a lot there you know, there's a lot that gets in the way of these dynamics when we work with people and when students study the technique. It, there's a lot layered there that, you know, am I, I it's, it's a curious thing. What is this really all about? How do I know if I'm doing what I should be doing? And um, as you just said, I just lost yeah, my train of thought yeah. there. But I'm, I'm wondering, um, there, a, a, an approach that, that I, I've been taking to teaching a, a lot of, of late is if, for example, you can work with somebody and then they can do an activity with greater ease, even if it's just for a few seconds, uh, and th then they may go back to their old uh, pattern. But it's pretty clear that that ease situation is available to them, right? Right. I tend to put it in terms of, well, now you know that's a possibility. Right. And it's really a question of are you going to choose to mentally direct yourself in a way that helps bring that about? Or do you, would you choose to just be the same? In other words, right. it isn't that you're going to be, in a sense, almost creating a new thing, but you're just choosing a possibility that's there. Right, and I think that also takes away from that right, wrong, judgmental. It's just a choice. Right, it's exactly. just a choice, That's and right. when it's put like that, a lot of people and and it and it's a choice that really requires no mental effort to speak of. Not really. You just choose the one that you think might be a little more useful as an experiment, and and then if if. Over time, that experiment continues to produce results that you like, then you have a pretty good idea of where you want to be headed, right? I mean, that's, right. It's, it's that simple. Right. But then, as you say, that could then transfer over to your relationships with, quote, difficult, unquote, people or en right. enemies or right. or you know, bad parents or, or whatever, right? Yes, um, yeah. From, yeah. You know, I, I'd like to say the, the beginning of this, sort of the origins of this, my ideas. I had a sister who had Down syndrome, and mm -hmm. she passed a few years ago. And that, my relationship with her was the most important relationship, the most significant relationship of my life. I followed her. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know anyone, if you don't know someone who has Down syndrome, they are the purest form of love there is no judgment in them there is no unkindness there is they are so essential love beings and to witness you know to live my life seeing her and then to go into the work that i did and working with people who had tension in their body and looking at my sister cindy who had no tension i realized that so much of our tension comes from judging ourselves and and trying to be someone that we're not and so when she died a few years ago i made a commitment to take her teaching about love and try to live it and it's it's coming out i didn't know how it would manifest but it's really coming out through my work and uh through all of my interactions with people and I find that 
I'm letting go of so much that I used to hold on to. And I'm helping people, like in Alexander Lessons, this is something that I find myself saying a lot. And, you know, I know my work may not be for everybody, uh, but I also know that it is for some people that there's this place where they feel in themselves that they can truly rest and know that it's okay. You know, it's safe. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, which I've discovered more and more, can you sense the way that I am working with you? And they say yes. And I say, how would you describe that? And they might say gently or carefully Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. kindly or any variety of things. And then I say to them, what would it be like if you were to be this way with yourself? And uh, almost all the time, there is this sense of letting go, you know, Mm -hmm. of of Mm -hmm. yielding. And that's what I think the essence of the work is, the Alexander Technique. What what it is, and I was reading this wonderful book um, by John Prendergast called In Touch, and the very final chapter, he talks about how we are exactly, we are, we are in presence. We are where and w- right where we need to be. And what we do is we fall back away from ourselves. There isn't any place to get to. We are already here. And so too with the Alexander work. It's here. We're right here. It's not about doing something different. It's about letting go of what gets in the way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of being free and available. Mm -hmm. And, and I equate that with love. Uh, I, I, I equate that with compassion, deep compassion through the Gestalt work that I have done. Um, and my Gestalt uh, work with others, I see that when people are allowed to be just as they are, things just start to shift mm-hmm. beautifully. Mm-hmm. And so the Alexander technique for people, I, I think I'm coming upon an understanding, you know, after doing it for a long time that I didn't have before, that it isn't really about anything we do. It's about how we are with ourselves and how we honor the reality and the truth and the beauty of who we are with without judgment, without criticism, without trying to go somewhere else, but to be just as we are. And I, I, I think that's the crux of the technique. I think it's the beauty of the technique. And I think that's why the technique has stands the test of time and is so and is the foundation of all my work but for many many years i thought it was about a way of doing you know which i know i probably wasn't taught that i probably was taught about the difference between being and doing right but i now understand that it is really about a way of being and that beingness that being quality is is when we are totally compassionate you know and accepting of ourselves we are living the alexander technique we are in our freedom we are in our ease our inherent wisdom and life uh awareness takes over we don't fall back away from ourselves we aren't seeking anywhere else we are where we are, and it's, it's in its, you know, I love the idea of wabi-sabi, this sort of perfection and imperfection, that we are perfectly imperfect, that mm-hmm. there are in every moment things we could do better, things that need to shift, adjustments, and in every moment we can accept right where we are. And that's what I'm finding now to be my definition of the Alexander Technique, that it it helps people come to a place, whether I say it or not, or whether we talk about it or not, but where they are in a relationship with themselves that is more compassionate, more caring, more gentle, more understanding. And then You know, I mean, I could go into the world view, but really, if we were to have that sense, there would be, it would be much better in this world. You know, I mean, there would not be 
I don't have a sense of needing to fight or hold on to something mm -hmm. when I am right where I am accepting it. So, to, I mean, at the risk of oversimplifying, the, the very processes that eliminate harmful physical tension, that restrict your ability to move well or create pain or discomfort, are also going to take you, if you allow them to, to this place of openness to give and receive love. Yeah, I, absolutely. And you absolutely. could you could come to I think you could, the same. Yeah, and I think yeah. I, I think obviously most people today come for Alexander lessons because of pain and discomfort, uh, wanting to be able to to move and stand and sit more more and go through their life more easily, in kind of a physical way. Right. But as a Perhaps for, for many of them, as an unexpected bonus, they're going to get this uh, additional gift, which I suppose is even greater, right, uh, <laughs> ultimately. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, Robert, there, there, we are all – I don't even say that I work on someone's body. I don't even talk about the body anymore. It's us. The mm -hmm. whole of us. Mm -hmm. It's really, there's no separation between my my body and my being. I, I can't mm -hmm. separate them anymore. Mm -hmm. And so when I work with someone in an Alexander capacity and they have back pain, it's really not about just their back. And in fact, I hardly even focus on the back. Mm -hmm. It's really about the totality of them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, how do they move and live in themselves? And how are mm -hmm. they with themselves? And... All of that becomes revealed. Right. You know, well, the and I mean, Alexander's third book, the title is The Use of the Self. Right. He didn't right. say the use of the body. He didn't no. say the use of the mind. He said the use of the self. And I assume by that he meant all the things you're talking about. Yeah, I Every, would. Everything. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, unless you have something you want to add, this might be a good place to bring our conversation to a close. What do you think? I think it's, I, I think, so. I think we've you. covered it pretty well. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my guest today has been Melody Shaper, who is an Alexander Technique teacher, and she teaches other things as well. Uh, and, and she works, uh, what is the name of the town you work in? Kimberton, Kimberton, which is near Philadelphia. Yep. So if anything that we, and I'm going to put a link to her website uh, by the interview. And on that website, you can also access her blog, which has a lot of, um, is what she talked about at one point earlier in our conversation and that, then you can you can read those entries, and if you're interested in what we're talking about and you want to explore having Alexander lessons and you live in the Philadelphia area, uh, contact Melody. If uh, you live anywhere else in the world, I'll also put a link to uh, a site that'll enable you, where, a site where you can find out more about the Alexander technique in general terms, and you can locate a teacher near you. Uh, Melody, thanks so much for this. Thank you, Robert.